So it's going to be one of those movies. Critics? Hate it. Fans? Loved it. What did I think? Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to an all-new Talk and Movies. As always, I'm your host, the real Gino Gino Reynolds, and today we're going to be talking about the crime drama Black and Blue. Uh, what this movie is about, it's about a woman who's been gone from home, New Orleans being home, for about 10 years. Uh, she's been in the military, but now she's come home and now she is a rookie police officer. And the thing she's starting to notice is that the place has really changed. Let's just put it that way. Um, and she begins to uh, kind of see how uh, at least the cop she's partnered with, she's been on the job for about three weeks. The cop she's partnered with, he seems fine, but she can see that police in the area uh, maybe abuse their power a little too much. Uh, she notices her partner uh, just walks out of the convenience store with uh, like coffee and a donut doesn't pay um and she ends up paying for him uh and we kind of learn that real quick that she's gonna be uh the the one honest cop right uh like totally honest cop um she gets back to the station when her shift's over and uh there has her partner has been called in to pull a double but he has a big date planned with his wife they don't get out of the house very often, so uh, our our rookie cop, played by no, uh, Naomi Harris, uh, she takes the shift for him, and she's teamed up with a new partner, and so they're she's riding along with the partner, and again she's starting to learn that, uh, especially on this night shift, that things just don't seem right. Um, you know, she, she calls out her partner for, uh, being abusive towards someone, but the guy ended up having a gun. Uh, and of course with the way we know things turn out, you wonder, did he plant the gun on the guy? Uh, but it never really comes to fruition, uh, that part anyway. Uh, and of course you've seen it in the trailer where the, the partner's telling her, you know, you're not, you're not black now, you're blue, you're one of us. And uh, so it's like, you know, forget who she's, he's basically telling her, forget where you came from. Uh, you're one of us now. So, uh, they go to the, he gets the, the partner gets a call and they go to this warehouse and he tells her to stay in the car. He has to go meet, uh, CI. So she's waiting in the car, but then she notices the car that's parked in front of them, uh, which ends up being, uh, the car of one of, uh, of another cop, by the way, in the future, uh, we learn that, but someone is trying to steal this other car and she's just like, are you kidding right in front of me? And so she gets out and the guy runs off, but then she hears a gunshot. So wondering if something's wrong, if something happened to her partner, uh, she goes in to investigate. And of course, this whole time, the point of the movie is she's wearing a body cam and they do make it a point near the beginning. It's like, everybody's going to be wearing them soon. Well, by the end of this movie, I'm sure they will be. Um, so she goes in to investigate and she walks around a corner and she sees a few dead bodies and she hears arguing. And one of the cops she's seen earlier is arguing with a person and that cop shoots that person and she captures it on her body cam. Uh, she accidentally makes a noise and they see that she's there and they say, look, we're all on the same team. We need to talk about this. But then one of the other cops pulls a gun and shoots her and she falls. Uh, she's able to get up. She, she loses her weapon, but she keeps the body cam on her and runs. And then that sets up the whole story of, uh, why these cops did what they did. She has to get this evidence back, uh, to the station because you have to download it into the system. Uh, otherwise you lose it because if they destroyed the body cam, it'd be destroyed. Um, so the whole thing is these seemingly dirty cops chasing her, trying to get the body cam and she doesn't know who to trust and all that. So, um, I will say this. Okay. Critics are hating this movie. That being said on sites like Rotten Tomatoes, 
there's only been like 40 or 50 critics that have looked at it where normally in a lot of movies you have like 200 maybe even 300 so the critic pool the averages just don't add up because not everyone's seen it um and there's almost like a thousand uh user reviews and they love it and i have to say this i I, as a critic while i kind of understand while some critics are are saying well, this isn't anything special. I get it. Because really, I mean, there isn't anything in this movie that's really a surprise or anything like that. There's no there's no twist you won't see coming. You know who's good. You know who's bad. You know what I mean? It's just one of those kind of movies where everything kind of falls in the place where you expect it to. The characters they introduce, you know, you know hey, this character may or may not help her later. Uh, you know that, hey, this character's probably going to be bad. This this character's going to be good. This character's going to make a mistake. This character's going to be important later because of this scene. I mean, it's just one of those movies. So, yeah, it is a very, very, very highly predictable movie. That being said, that's not saying it's not an entertaining one. Um, well, I didn't love this movie. I still thought it was fairly entertaining. Uh, I thought the performances were pretty good. I mean, I'm not saying there's anything uh like award winning in this but everybody in this put on a pretty good performance naomi harris is a good lead she you you want to see her succeed she's you know she's you know she's got the moral high ground on pretty much everyone uh in this in this movie you know that she is the bar for good guy uh in this movie um tyrese gibson um, I'm not a huge fan of his, but he's fine in this as well. And, and he's the, uh, you know, the, the cops see him as a, as a problem, but really deep down, you know, he may have made some mistakes in the past, but you know, he's one of the good guys too. Deep down, the decisions he makes are going to be for the greater good. Uh, Frank Grillo and this is Frank Grillo. I mean, if you love Frank Grillo, you get, you get Frank Grillo in this and, you know, he plays the head dirty cop and, uh, he's what you expect. I mean, you, he's going to manipulate the system, uh, against our good guy. Anytime the good guy gets a leg up, he has a counteraction for it. Um, he's, uh, he just puts on a solid performance. Mike Coulter's in this, um, it almost, okay. If you've seen Luke Cage, the second season, the end where he becomes basically, the godfather he becomes like you know the the high-end gangster well this is if (laughs) it almost felt like if luke cage was like uh in the same position but like more of a more of a street uh more of a street thug um he's kind of the the kingpin of of the ghetto i guess the way you could really kind of put it um and i really liked him in this as well i mean mike holter is just a fun actor he, you can tell he's having fun with his roles and he has fun with this one. So the performances are good. Um, you know, so it's, uh, you have, you know, just solid actors doing solid work. Uh, again, nothing really award winning, but it, they're just, they're putting on good performances that help you keep you invested in the story. Uh, the story itself. Yeah. It's highly predictable. Again, you know, kind of what's going to happen, but it doesn't mean you're not having a good time watching it. It's it's kind of a fun, uh, you know, cat and mouse kind of movie. Uh, every time Naomi Harris's character uh, gets into a bind, you have to, you know, she has to find, okay, I need to, who do I trust? Uh, who do I need to, you know, can I go to? Uh, where do I need to go? Where can I hide? And, and she has to kind of outsmart uh, the cops that are chasing her because really there's that we see uh even though we know there's more probably um we're only certain of uh only certain of five to six bad guy cops so it's not like they're trying this isn't the see what i was afraid of with this movie was that they were going to try to say the entire police force is bad right um because just what we get in news and things right now where, you know, both sides are claiming they're the good guys. And it's like, you know, there's probably bad on both sides and there's good on both sides, right? So I was glad that this movie only focused on like these five or six 
bad guy cops. Any other cops you see in this are cops. They're doing their job, right? So we don't really get to know any more of them, except maybe, uh, the, I believe, it was the captain of the station. And she's definitely a good guy. Um, but other than that, it's, it's just focusing on these dirty cops. And then we know that Naomi Harris's character is the good guy, right? We don't, there is no secrets there. She's doing the right thing. You know, people are people and that's it. There's no, there's no black and blue. It's just people are people and right. And there's right is right and wrong is wrong. Um, so we, we, at least it focuses on it like that. So I give it credit. I give the movie credit for that, that it didn't try to make some political statement that, you know, all cops are bad because it's, that's not the case. I mean, I mean, I know a lot of people think all cops are bad. I, I don't believe that. I, then again, I don't believe that all certain types of people are bad. It, it's there's good and there's evil. And this movie kind of focuses on it like that. So I, I, I was really, I was really happy that this movie decided to do it that way. Um, when it comes to the overall feel of the movie, it's just, it, it definitely keeps the, the drama high. It definitely keeps, uh, the tension high where it can, uh, because they want you to fear for, uh, Naomi Harris's character the entire time. And you do because, while she does have a bulletproof vest, she has no weapon uh, throughout most of the movie. So it's you know you're wondering you know when someone gonna gonna get a hold of her because it's her being chased by just a few guys and then again she don't know who to trust. You see it in the trailer where she tries to approach some other officer saying she's been shot, but then you find out that they're on the take too. So you know it's it's definitely. Uh, the, the tension is definitely high throughout the entire movie. And, and the movie does a good job at keeping that tension. Is it all believable tension? No. Because there's times where it's like, well, why didn't she just, you know, get to this part of town and hail a cab? But that being said, they keep, it's not like it's a citywide romp. They keep it within this whole neighborhood. They, they keep most of the movie contained in the, this neighborhood. So I think that was smart because I think if they would have spread it out, you know, she could have hailed a cab and made it to the, to the police station a lot easier, but, uh, she's in a part of town where, uh, they even say that the, her partner even says, we don't even go to this part of town, uh, or to the certain building, uh, unless one of ours is in trouble. Um, so the movie does a good job at keeping the tension because it keeps it kind of grounded within this certain, uh, area of new Orleans. Um, I'm going to get in a bit of a spoiler territory, uh, here. Um, there's a few things that, um, again, it plays into the predictability and I don't hold it too much against this movie, but I would have liked this movie to have a little bit more uncertainty. Um, her partner, uh, there's a part of the movie where she calls her partner and he comes to get her and it's like, you know, he's going to betray her, but you know, later he's going to help her. And he does exactly that. Um, there's, even though they don't really show it uh they kind of tease it that there might be a relationship between and the end of the movie between uh naomi harris's character and tyrese gibson's character um honestly i don't think this movie needed that at all it almost kind of shows like the beginning of it the end of the movie is showing the beginning of maybe they have a relationship i mean they don't like kiss or anything but you know they kind of give each other that look and he says something like i appreciate you and he kisses her on the forehead and they kind of look at each other again it's like oh there could be re you didn't need that they could have just been friends and it would have worked exactly the same way um but again th those are minor issues it, it, this movie again while not great it's still entertaining I think if you saw this in the theater, you're going to like it, but I wouldn't tell you you need to rush to the theater to go see it. It's definitely a rental for me, but again, if you go see it, I don't, uh, I don't think you're going to be too disappointed. I have to side with the audiences on this one. That's going to be all for this edition of Talkin' Movies. If you like what you've heard here, please subscribe to the Real Geno YouTube channel. Like this video. If you have anything to say about black and blue, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Till next time, I am your host, the Real Geno, Geno Reynolds. See you later.